This week's videos are all about my trip to Germany, where I got to explore the beautiful city of Cologne before meeting up with my friend Alex to head to Hamburg. Some of you may know Alex from her channel, Backpacking Brunette. She lives in the Mexican city of Querétaro, which is where we first met and hit it off. She's absolutely hilarious, and as it turns out, a great travel partner. Be sure to check out her Germany travel videos, which I'll link in the description below. Hi, I'm Laura, and for the last 11 years, my boyfriend Luke and I have been living in different countries around the world. What was initially meant to be a year of travel after graduating from college quickly morphed into a lifelong love for exploring the world. Since we packed up those backpacks for the first time back in 2010, we have lived in New Zealand, Australia, South Korea, Mexico, and are now living in Lithuania. In between those settled years, we spent long periods of time traveling to over 20 different countries. And now, we're enjoying setting up a new life in a new country, very different from our last. And through these videos, I share my experiences with you. After a brief 24 hours in Cologne, Alex and I met at the train station and made our way to Hamburg. It was about a four hour train ride on this second class train car and it cost 30 euros per person. Around 7 p.m. we pulled into the Hamburg train station and started our trip in this big city. Hamburg is the second largest city in Germany and is a major port city as well. It's located in northern Germany and sits along the Elbe River, which flows out to the North Sea. It's also the largest non-capital city in the entire EU. I knew Hamburg was a big city before I arrived, but I think after three months in Lithuania, I wasn't prepared for just how big such a big city would actually feel. We have just arrived to our hotel here in Hamburg, and there are some things about it, like this phone that I really like. I also feel like you should see the light in the bathroom. Where did you bring me, Laura? I had no <laughs> idea what kind of weekend we were gonna share. It turns out the bathroom did actually have a normal light. The red light was a heat lamp that helped make the bathroom nice and toasty warm before a shower. We had a big bathroom with everything that you'd expect to find in a mid-range hotel. The water pressure in the shower was fantastic. Everything was very clean, and the room itself had two comfortable twin beds and plenty of space for us both to put our stuff while we were there. For two people, it ended up costing about 75 euros per night, which we split between us, and this was one of the cheapest options I could find at the last minute for two people. It was really well located, about eight minutes from the train station and five minutes to the main street of the St. George neighborhood, where there were tons of great restaurants and bars. Frau Mola was a restaurant that kept popping up on my searches for great local German food, and it did not disappoint. We ate well, we had delicious pilsners, and we headed back to our hotel for the night to rest up for a full day of exploring. We started the next morning with a walk back to the St. George neighborhood for a seriously delicious cup of coffee. They had a small selection of pastries, and I did not regret my choice. The buttery and flaky croissant was perhaps one of the best I've had in recent memory, and the coffee was made to perfection. A cute little bunny added a visual benefit for what was a great start to the day. Good morning, welcome to Hamburg. We are caffeinated up now after having a delicious coffee in the little neighborhood of St. George where we're staying. And uh, yeah, now we're gonna explore the old town. We've got two days here in Hamburg to see the sights and eat all the delicious food and drink all the pilsners. So uh, yeah, take you along with us and see what we see. We headed for the City Hall building, which would turn out to be my favorite building in all of Hamburg. The old City Hall of Hamburg burned down in 1842, and it took them almost 44 years to build this new neo-Renaissance style one. This construction cost 11 million German gold marks, or 80 million euros. That's a lot of money considering it was 1897. From there, we walked around to the Hamburg Stock Exchange and then along the waterways that led to the Alster, a tributary of the Elbe River. 
In the 13th century, the river was ponded to create two artificial lakes, the Outer Alster and the Inner Alster. The Inner Alster is what you see here and where you can hop on a small ferry to get to the other parts of the pond. From here, we walked out of the old city and into the new city, where we were in search of a place to recaffeinate. So one of our plans for being here in Hamburg is really just to like experience all the good restaurants and bars and coffee spots. So we are at Public Roasters. They roast their own beans and uh, we really needed another pick-me-up this morning, so. Our last stop before lunch was to the St. Nicholas Monument. The St. Nicholas Church was originally founded in 1195, making it one of the oldest churches in Hamburg. In July 1943, Allied airplanes attacked the city, killing 35,000 people and destroying 250,000 homes and buildings, one of which was this church. After the war, the city decided not to rebuild the church and instead leave it as a memorial for those that lost their lives in what is now referred to as the firestorm over Hamburg. It's a little windy, but Hamburg has like all these little pockets of like really beautiful areas. Like the water kind of splits it up. I'll show on a little map what, what I mean, but it's so cool like to sort of walk around. It feels like you're like walking around these canals and and every other side. Every side is like a totally different part of the city, a totally different neighborhood. It looks quite different, like it's so cool. It's really beautiful. We headed for lunch near the port in search of somewhere that was doing some nice soups and a lighter fare. And we stumbled across this little pub style restaurant. They had a nice specials menu and the woman running the bar was friendly and translated it for us since it was only written in German. As I filmed some of the interior, she told me that all of the different currencies on the ceiling came from the tradition of when the sailors were leaving for a trip. They would tack a bill onto the ceiling so that when they returned from their voyage, they had enough money to buy themselves a beer or two for their first night home. This is the other side of the restaurant, which the woman told me was the original port area of Hamburg and where the sailors would come and dock their boats thirsty for that first pint. After lunch, we headed across the water to the neighborhood of Hafen City. Hamburg called this urban project the most ambitious inner city development in Europe. They're building modern architecture like the Philharmonic alongside UNESCO heritage buildings like these brick warehouses. The growth of this waterfront neighborhood has extended the inner city of Hamburg by 40%. All of this walking was really working up an appetite, so we stopped for a mid-afternoon snack of apple cake before eventually finding a good place to have beers and dinner. Good morning. We are at the pier here in Hamburg to hop on the ferry and do a little exploring along the waterfront. And uh, yeah, it's it's busy. Look at all the people. <laughs> yeah, I think the ferries are only like a couple of euros to hop on. Instead of paying 15 euros to go on a boat trip, um, you're basically getting the same experience for a lot less money. Right, we went three stops, took about 15 minutes, cost two euros and 40 cents, and now we are going to go to Elbe Tunnel, which I only just learned about today, thanks to a follower on Instagram. And uh, I think we're gonna be able to go literally like under the river, 12 meters deep, I think. So it should be pretty cool and interesting, and uh, let's, let's see. So we searched, and we searched, <laughs> and we searched. I looked on my Google Maps 
and it promised that we were literally standing right above the tunnel. We decided to ask someone, and it turns out there are two Elbe tunnels. One is just for cars, and the other, the old Elbe tunnel, the one we were looking for, was in fact back where we started. So as it turns out, this is not where the tunnel is. This is where like the tunnel for cars is. We're over it. We just asked someone and they told us it's back where we started on the ferry. So we're gonna take the ferry back, but first we're having a little coffee and uh, looking out at this view. <laughs> But yeah, so five euros round trip roughly to come out here, have a coffee, and uh, go back to where we started to find the tunnel that we were looking for. At least we got a boat ride. So we hopped back on the ferry and made our way back to Landungsbrücken to find the Elbe Tunnel. By the time we made it back, we were pretty hungry, so first we had to try Hamburg's famous sandwich, the Fischenbrötchen, or Fischenbread. This place had a huge line along the pier and had the best reviews of all of the little fish sandwich spots, so we waited in line for our turn to choose. I got a smoked fish sandwich and Alex went for the shrimp, and we ate in silence because we were close to hangry. Then finally, finally, we headed for the tunnel. The Old Elbe Tunnel, or the St. Pauli Elbe Tunnel, first opened in 1911. It is 426 meters long, or 1,397 feet. It is 24 meters, or 78 feet, below the surface. At the time it was built, it was an absolute feat of engineering. Besides being historically interesting, it takes you over to the docks, where you can get an incredible view back over the city of Hamburg. Our time in Hamburg was coming to an end, as was our time together. So we did what I mentioned earlier and found some more great places to eat and drink, enjoyed the last of that little ray of sunshine that was poking through, and we headed to bed ready for a long day of travel ahead. For me, that meant a train to the Berlin airport, a flight to Vilnius, and a bus back to Utena. But best of all was flying back over Lithuania as we came into land. It's funny when you make the realization that somewhere has become your home, not just in the physical sense, but the emotional one. When you look forward to touching back down, when you anticipate opening the door to your apartment, unpacking, and getting cozy under the covers of your own bed. It's nice to be home. <laughs>